So I'm so happy to see so many people. Actually, I, was, I had a nightmare yesterday that was only going to be Mauricio, me, and maybe Whitney. Um, um, so yeah, appreciate you. I know there was, uh, um, no, we have to do the talk in Spanish, in Espanol, sí? We can do it in Spanish, uh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> um, so I, I, like I said, uh, I know there was a, a lot of talks at this time, so I, I really appreciate so many people coming in to know about the Kennedy Project and the open source aspect of it, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, joining CNCF um, and a little bit about the, the, the function. So um, just to survey the room, um, uh, who, who have contributed to, to Knative? Um, a dog or code? Mm -hmm. So we have a few folks. Who yep. have used Knative before? Great. That's um, who was who was yesterday uh, here in the day two K Native Con? Okay. Okay. So don't miss out the the next one. We're going to have one in Detroit, uh, and the CFP will come in will come out uh, soon. So if this you have a chance, by if you're not you're learning K Native or you're using K Native, uh, those are the type of talks that I the program committee and part of the program committee that we're looking for. So don't don't be afraid if you don't contribute to K Native. One of the main talks that we're looking for is uh, end-user companies or end-user organizations. How are you using Knative? How Knative is solving your issues? And also, if you're an end-user company, please reach out to me because I'm doing interviews just to get your story about how you're using Knative. What are the things that is working for you? What are the things that are missing? So we can have feedback into the community, and I can serve that into the user experience group uh, to make it better and showcase your company as a case study because that's part of the CNCF uh, journey. If we become CNCF, other companies would join who have confidence that the project will stick around for a while and it will have more features and will be robust and it will be enterprise ready. Um, so with that, and if you are uh, into Knative, we have another talk this afternoon actually on Knative from yep. Mauricio. Yeah, I'm presenting with Thomas here, and we are talking about like functions and all the stuff that is coming there, and how do you build like a you know a function as a service kind of platform? Yeah, so we go deeper on on the candidate function. So yep. today we're going to talk a little bit about the project, so people get get involved, and uh, hopefully uh, by Detroit, I want to see more hands of people contributing uh, to to <laughs> And again. Contribution is not code, right, Mauricio? That's, we that's always correct. say yep. it could be a, a piece of blog post, it could be a tutorial, it could be um, just joining Slack and answering questions on Stack Overflow. Creating an issue. Creating an issue, yep. explaining like, I have this issue and this is a, re a, a reproduce that is easy to reproduce. Sometimes people just say they have an issue and then that's it, but we always ask uh, those excellent folks that write all the information like, this is how to reproduce it in a, in a simpler way. Um, so that's, that's everything counts. At the con Actually, those counts into contributions for voting for our members. So currently, if you are contributing those, those type of things, you can vote in the TOC elections. Uh, the Technical Oversight uh, Committee is having elections right now. And uh, you can go online and vote if you are, if you are a contributor. And, and we count those contributors in the dev stacks, like we, the dev stacks that we use for Kubernetes on the mm -hmm. other CNCF projects. Um, I think that you're forgetting something important, that is that we have stickers. Oh, yes. So if um, you want I have, stickers, have, we stickers, have stickers. So if you have questions, you have dibs on, on stickers. Uh, so <laughs> if you have good questions, you get two stickers. Um, but yeah, there's stickers around for everyone. Mm -hmm. Evan has here. Has even more um, stickers. And I have more here. So if, if and, and take, and take uh, the stickers out, right, to give to your friends, or if you are doing meetups in your country where you're from uh, about Knative, right, you're giving a talk, you know, you can give stickers out. Um, and we're going to have a CNCF store, so if, if that's something that you want to continue doing, like running meetups and be an ambassador or, or an advocate for Knative, now we're the, in CNCF, we, we have funds, we, we, have, we have money. <laughs> now we can use to give swag, so we, we're trying to get the store up, up, um, up and running. Uh, I think we're going to, first thing is going to be t-shirts. Um, we didn't have them for here, but for Detroit, hopefully, hopefully we have both stickers, t-shirts, and if Lindsay can get me socks, I really want socks, can need socks, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Everybody has cool socks, and then we don't have we don't. Um, <laughs> socks. So right. that was a, a long introduction. We, we, we were burning five minutes on that one.
<laughs> so uh, introductions, who are the two people, random people up here? My name is Carlos Santana. I play the guitar, make millions, and now I heard that Kubernetes <laughs> is awesome and people are making more millions out of Kubernetes, so I need to, to get in there. Uh, I'm an architect in IBM. I work with a lot of customers, insurance companies, bank companies, trying to make uh, their software and IBM software run on Kubernetes the best way possible with DevOps. And upstream, I work on Knative and Steering Committee. And in uh, Kubernetes, I'm in the SIG release. Um, recently joined there, and the release team lead for release notes uh, 125, help in 124. So if you are in the, also in Kubernetes upstream, come say hi, because I'm, I'm trying to meet uh, and learn that, that journey about all the SIGs. And um, Mauricio? Yeah, so my name is Mauricio Salatino. Uh, I will keep it super short. Uh, I'm I'm working for VMware uh, upstream Knative as well, working on functions a lot these days, working also a little bit on Knative eventing, but I, I'm truly passionate and close to developers, so I'm really pushing forward to get like a great developer experience there on the functions project. It's pretty exciting. We will be showing a bit of that now. Yeah, and follow uh, Mauricio on Twitter. He has a cool weekly Knative newsletter that he does yeah. of his experience of working with Knative and the Knative community. Yeah. I, I read it every week, so it's, it's keep doing it. So people are actually reading it. If you, <laughs> if you don't have metrics, get metrics um, <laughs> in there. So um, yeah. So let's, uh, we let's have something started. fun for this, for this talk. Yeah. It's maintainer's track. Usually I like dry, but we want to do a game. Yes, so basically we are going to play a game at the end of the session, right? But I wanted to show you how the game looks like uh, so we can all play at the end because it's a little bit fast. Uh, it's like just a quiz game, pretty simple stuff. But if you don't see it before you play, it might be too fast for, for some, some people there. So usually, like this is a quiz game, you go there, you just generate a, a player's name because we don't want you to enter your crazy names. Uh, and then when you have one that you like, then you start playing, right? And as you can imagine, this is being built by functions, but that basically means that each question processing kind of like the inputs that you're providing, it's just a function that will be get started in a Kubernetes cluster, right? So the moment you start a question, you will see here a timer, and you have 10 seconds to, to answer. If you save some time, for example, five seconds there, that's going to count in your, your points experience, right? Like an, I corrected maybe kind of like, kind of, you know, like, okay, so I get 10 points there. And you can see here that you know, a function was created there and bootstrapped in the cluster. I can do that for question two, which is a little bit different. It has some pressing buttons and stuff. And you will see that as soon as the timer runs out, a new function will be created in the cluster, right? If we are all playing at the same time, we will just be sending a lot of, you know, uh, putting a lot of demand on the system, so functions will be scaled up uh, dynamically by Knative. Well, what I wanted to explain here is in the last, like in the last screen here, you have like this tweet button. Basically, that when you click it, it will take you to Twitter. And if you tweet and you rank high in the leaderboard, uh, we will be, you know, sharing some swag in there as well. So. Now you know how it works. Let's go through the presentation, and then we will be playing together at the end. Carlos? Yeah, so it's a competition, and it's not a competition. It's, yes, um, it's a fun competition. It's a, it's a yes. uh, Valencia trivia. So uh, <laughs> for you that haven't seen uh, Kenny before, um, it's, uh, the project is around um, serving, which is, gets a lot of attention uh, to it the, for the serverless uh, containers on Kubernetes. And we also have the event-driven apps, or EDA, uh, it's, it's good to, to spell it out, event-driven applications, which is async operations, async cloud events. Uh, it's based on cloud events, which is another CNCF project. Um, on those, we have a reference implementation, but Knative is also an API. So you can take an API for developer experience. We made the API v1.0, so you say it's a stable API that we feel confident going out to do conformance. Um, you can have an implementation. Some vendors have an implementation behind it that is not Kubernetes. But most of the people here today are going to run it in Kubernetes as the implementation of it. And that's what makes it a, um, a Kubernetes native, right? Uh, CRDs, the way you manage. So a lot of questions when you have for running Knative, usually the answer is like, you do it the Kubernetes way, right? Uh, so we put the developer experience, that abstraction, but at the end of the day, a lot of people like to use it because some of the lower level questions, they get answered like, you do it either the Kubernetes way or a cloud provider way. Um, Knative features, uh, we can say, the simpler abstractions uh, that get very um, appealing to folks is the YAML uh, 
like the doom scrolling, right? We have Twitter, Twitter, doom Twitter scrolling. doom scrolling. We have YAML <laughs> doom scrolling. We just start with a YAML with the ingress and the cert manager and the deployment and the service and get the labels correct. And then you have the HPA and you can have maybe uh, some uh, service mesh routing thing percentages and weight. By the end of the day, you have a lot of YAML. So what we try to do is like abstract that into a simple abstraction that it literally is like 10 lines of code that you can get started with a serving YAML file where you specify, here's the container and here's the port. And if the port is 8080, you can just uh, omit that. The other one is auto scaling. Like uh, this morning, they were talking about the, in the keynote of the energy efficiency on how much CPU is wasted. So what we want to do is have as many pods, right, that have been packing into, into auto scaling so you can have maximum efficiencies to get as many deployment definitions, right? And those deployment definitions will be sometimes scaled to zero um, and will not consume energy. And then you have other definitions that are running. So you can have a lot of definitions of these applications in a Kubernetes cluster, but depending what is the demand and the traffic and what are the, types of the type of applications are running, they will scale to um, out. Um, and then when there's no traffic, can scale to zero or one, depending if your, um, your code starts and those type of things. Uh, progressive rollouts is some feature that it's, it has like a, an initial implementation, I would say, but we're looking for the community to come up with like, better and more clever ways of doing these rollouts. Because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of, I would say, a lot of information or innovation going out in your companies on how do you do rollouts. And some of the feedback that I hear in the community, which whole way track is, is awesome for that, is I don't use the standard rollout because it doesn't work for my company. Well, we want to see what is working for companies and share that and build that in. But at least in, in, in Knative, we have one that is, is time-based. Basically, you give it like, I want to roll out this, the new revision in one hour. So it would, it would split that one hour in 100% increments, and it will start uh, rolling out the percentage of the traffic, right, from zero to 100, because you don't want to like suddenly like send all the traffic to the new re revision. So you have the option to say like, well, take your time to roll out this, this revision and maybe for one region, and then you move to the next one. Um, the other one is event integrations, and this is where we have a need for sources. So we have, the, the, we have channels and subscriptions that is kind of a direct communication messaging uh, platform, but we also have a kind of a hub or broker pattern that you can have consumers or, or syncs that tra tap into, that, into those cloud events based on different filters, um, and those uh, can be dynamic filters, which is a, it's behind a feature flag. So if you have seen demos or examples of being like strict to some attributes of that cloud event, there's a dynamic uh, filter for that, uh, for that event integration. But we need event sources more from the community. And then handling events is like somebody produced the events. It could be a cloud provider. It could be pops up from, from Google. It could be Trigger Mesh has a lot of integrations. They can send you events from different providers and, and cloud providers. Or it could be your own events in your application. So you're handling events and producing events. And that's, uh, there was a great talk yesterday uh, by Pablo that explains how do I handle events? Do I reply? Do I reply with an error? Which is an interesting um, aspect to that. The other one is pluggable. Since we are using uh, Kubernetes, um, we are uh, careful of choosing the abstractions, but also we are needing help from the community in terms of like what are the things uh, that we expose into those in those type of things by using um, uh, Kubernetes, right? You can have controllers, webhooks that annotate certain things. We have to leave that. Uh, alone because you have the need for um, uh, in introducing kind of specific configurations in those, in those deployments. But it's pluggable in the terms of you can have cloud events or you can have, for example, I was mentioning the broker. So right now, if, you, if your data core systems of events is RabbitMQ, plug it in. Um, if you're doing dev in a kind cluster in your computer, you can have the in-memory one. Or if your system, you already established your infrastructure on Kafka, you can tap, you can plug the Kafka. So the abstraction is pluggable in the things that you do, and you don't have to change the definition of the trigger uh, or the handler for that. So we try to make it very, very pluggable. Um, this, is, this is one that I added uh, um, 
uh, last minute, which is, uh, came out, out of this week. And we still have some um, information of K-Native that people have heard in the past. And I just wanted to have some myth busters. So the first one, I think it comes out a lot. I, I can use K-Native because it's used Istio. And I don't know how to use Istio. And Istio is so big that I can like burn my laptop up, right? And I cannot figure it out. You don't have to use Istio. It still was the first implementation, but at the, when we, ha we heard that feedback, we, we right away uh, created an abstraction that we were able to plug something else. Uh, so we was, I think it was ambassador emissary glue. But right now, the one that are stable are contour. Uh, we have our own uh, ingress that is smart enough that implements the, the minimum things that we need. It's called courier. And we have contour, and, and it's still there. It's still without the mesh and with the mesh. Um, but you don't have to use Istio. Um, not saying that Istio is bad or anything. It's like not anyone, uh, not everyone is using Istio. But the key aspect is I always say, if you're using Istio, don't introduce another one, right? Use Istio uh, with Knative. The other one was uh, people installing uh, Knative um, in their computer, right? It was uh, serving and eventing and eventing depending on serving CRDs. So we separated that so we can have serving by itself, a uh, small footprint, or eventing. And actually, it's a very small footprint that we get it running in kind uh, in less than, than five minutes. Um, uh, let me see. Another one that is, that is recently is PVC. Um, where some people were like, try K-Native because they needed some, uh, it was targeted for stateless applications, but maybe they did empty there, for example, very, very simple PVC or real PVC, there's a feature flag that got introduced recently, so you can have PVC, but take into account, if you create a PVC, it will take time to do the storage, which certain applications can, can handle that. Um, side cards, uh, you can, we can support multiple user containers, so you need a side card uh, that you're doing something special with your um, um, app, you can add that. Um, I think yesterday, somebody asked about ARM, and. Um, I, uh, we, we run Raspberry, I'm a fan of running Knative for Raspberry Pi, because I have a little bit, a lot of small applications there, but not, not running. So they run when there's an event in the, like in my house in auto, uh, automation, uh, and it runs. So it's, it, it supports our controllers, our building Go, and their, the images are multi-architecture, so um, you can run it in ARM. I already mentioned the dynamic filters, and header-based routing, uh, you can have the DNS, all of that function or, or service have an extra subdomain that you can target the URL. But there's applications that you want to do certain things by header, right? front end application that want to get to a revision or the last revision, you can have a header and then have the routing to that, to that service. So that's kind of the myth busters that some people try Knative um, and it, they were not able to get it into their um, production application because they were missing one or two features. So I just wanted to point out a few of them that give it another shot. And if you find something that is blocking you, uh, you know, tell us and we can help you out. It could be like a simple webhook for now or work around and we can put it in the backlog. Um, and the, the, we have uh, different working groups that will be evaluating depending what, where's the gap. Uh, adopters. This is something that comes along uh, a lot. Is like who's using Knative, right? No one wants to be like, this, the single company and the first company to use Knative in production. But we have some companies in production and some companies building a platform. See, people like Red Hat, IBM, VMware, Google, where are the, the, the main, uh, the first ones, and Trigger Mesh, uh, which is a, it's a startup that basically started out of uh, uh, the, the innovation of uh, Knative and, and Cloud Events. But we have case studies in the website. You can check them out. And those are the case studies that I want to continue doing. We have three, one from Deep Sea. Uh, for uh, for AI and gaming, Outfit Seven. Anyone knows uh, Tom Tom the Cat? That company actually, uh, I was surprised to see them in Slack, and I asked them like, "What you guys? What are you doing with with Knative?" Um, and I got I got to meet them, had an interview, and learn about what their uh, problem that they're solving, and the case study made it to the to the website. So um, web case studies are very good to feel. Uh, confident to other companies to, and also learn what, they're, they're, what are the problems they're solving. So um, I ask in the community, if you have your end user company, please reach out to, to me, Evan, or one of our uh, maintainers, uh, because we want to capture that. And since this is maintainers track, mm -hmm. if you have your open, open source project that you want to get into CNCF, K 
case studies is one of the requirements that the TOC would evaluate. Um, we need to time. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, major milestones that we did recently was the V1.1 that I said, joining CNCF. Um, and these are like kind of like the, the major milestones since we started the project. Um, stats, uh, we have 11,000 GitHub stars. Uh, we have two GitHub repos, so we have many repos in the core, and also we have a GitHub repo called Candidate uh, Sandbox. Uh, there's a multiple PRs coming in, and there's a lot of reviewers, but we need help in the community to get uh, more people into positions that they can help uh, review PRs, and we have a a, a ladder uh, on you getting started as a, as a member of um, and also to a lead position into one of the working group leads. And about CNCF projects, since this uh, CNCF um, uh, event, uh, we were able to get into CNCF. We did the, the work and the paperwork, um, and we uh, steering is kind of working out getting all those last minute um, transitions into getting all the CNCF uh, benefits from Zoom accounts uh, to implement the, the CLA and replace the Google CLA that we had in place to replace it with the CNCF one and that people can contribute. Um, the, the project structures, um, these are the, we have a steering committee, we have a technical committee. Uh, steering works with more of the community and the health of the project. Uh, the oversight technical committee, we have in, I mentioned at the beginning, we have in elections. So if you can uh, vote, uh, go ahead and, and vote for one of the candidates. And working groups, um, we're dividing into working groups. So it, depending on your preference uh, or your skills or the things that you want to learn, uh, join a working group. And you can just join. There's no requirement. You can join the meeting and start learning what they're working on from productivity that work on infra to serving and things like venting. I think there's a, a new one. Functions. Functions yeah. is, a, is a hot one that is just became a working group. Uh, roadmap, uh, we're looking into API Gateway, Kubernetes Ingress v2, uh, things that we presented yesterday, like container freezer, and a security audit that is uh, kind of a check mark saying that uh, we, it's, a it's one of the many requirements to go into CNCF graduation. Um, and we started like that process, Evan is, is working on that. And also, if you are a security person, uh, we would like to see uh, you join. So we have an open community that we want to hear what are the things maybe we put in that RFP, um, and also when the outcome of like what are the security findings mm -hmm. dealing with like the TLS version and the, the, the ciphers and all. So you in that space, we need people like that like to help us out. Clicker. There you Work. go. Okay. So yeah, I think that like following kind of like that message and the state of the project, I would say that Knative Functions is a very good place to start contributing. We are actively looking for new contributors, and this is the good thing about functions is that it's like a polyglot place. No matter which language you know, you can definitely contribute to the project. If you are into Go, you can contribute into the CLI. And that's what I want to quickly show you, kind of like what you can do with functions today. It's pretty simple. And the idea of functions, again, is just to build simple applications that do a single thing pretty easily. And we are focusing here into the developer experience. So basically what I can do, can you read it in the back? Uh, yeah, is that okay? Yeah, okay. So basically, I'm creating um, a, a function here, which is just a directory, and then what I will use is the func CLI. And in this case, I'm creating a function using the Go language, right? So I've just created like a, a language, like a function here uh, that I will can open in my ID. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. Again, this func CLI allows you to scaffold the project. Uh, this is just a very simple, simple source code here, like nothing. It's just saying, you know, this is a function. It's going to do something here. This is where you write your code, and this is the output of the function, right? So, hey, maintainers, right? So, pretty simple function. It's not going to do much. But the experience behind this is like uh, the idea of here, like a developer. I can just go back to the, to the terminal here. That's quite a bit better. And then basically just have this running in a Kubernetes cluster, right? So, I have a Kubernetes cluster already configured. Uh, and Funk will take care of building this function into a container, no matter the language that I use, right? And then uh, build the container, push that container to a registry, and then basically deploy that into a Knative installation without having to write a Docker file 
or a YAML file in this case. So Knative Func, in this case, the function project, is taking care of all this developer experience, and there is a lot of work in that area, right? Yesterday in KnativeCon, we also showed how you can do the building process instead of locally with your Docker, you know, with your Docker daemon in your laptop. You can do it remotely in a cluster. And what we are seeing here is that the function, you know, the container was built. It's now push pushing this uh, function container to the Docker registry, in this case, Docker Hub, with my, you know, with my account. And then the next step, it's going to be deploying that into uh, a, a, the Kubernetes cluster that it's running. So as a developer, I can focus on writing code, the code of that function. I can connect that function to a database or do whatever you want to do in the function. And then uh, just use the func CLI just to move that into a cluster. That can be like the, your development cluster, for example. Now it's deploying the function. And at the end of this, kind of like running this command, what I'm expecting to have is just a URL that I can basically access by just doing an HTTP request, right? So I went from having no project whatsoever to a function that runs inside Kubernetes. It's leveraging the entire you know, framework of Knative in this case. It's automatically scaling based on demand. And also, it's going to be downscaled to zero if I don't use it for a while in just three minutes, which is pretty nice, in my opinion. Uh, and again, this is polyglot, so I can create like a function using Java, or I can create a function using Rust or any other you know, energy efficient language. We do not support C right now, but we should. <laughs> and Bash. And I, I, was yes. I think in Slack I was talking so about Bash. <laughs> jokes, jokes aside, uh, that's kind of like nice, but that's a, you, as you can guess, that's a simple hello world kind of thing, right? And, and that's the main reason why we built kind of like the function, like the quiz game, just to show a little bit more how kind of like a normal application will look like. So the function game that you're going to play in your phones, I guess, or your laptops if you have a laptop, it's kind of like following this architecture, right? So we have a Kubernetes cluster with Knative installed. And as I mentioned before, uh, we have one function per level, in this case, per question. And these functions are connecting to, Ra to Redis to store the state, right? Like when you score like the, the answer of like a player, you're going to just store, store that in, in, in Redis. And then you will have, like, we will have like a, a leaderboard screen, which basically has a different function that goes to Redis, get all the scores for your, 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 you know, your play, your gameplay, and then just crunch that data, and then send it to you know, like a view that it's basically a ranking. Uh, when you start building these applications, you start, do we have, how much time do we have? We have five minutes. Yes. OK, when you start building this kind of like application, you will start realizing that, for example, in this case, if uh, your functions are like the ones that I show that are synchronous, you need to like send an HTTP request to the function so the function can do something. Uh, you will start dealing with latency issues, right? Like in this case, every time that I want to evaluate the score for a level, I need to go to the function, calculate the score, then go to Redis, store you know, the score, and then go back with the answer to the, to, the, to the user, right? So all that kind of thing takes time. So it's like when you start building functions, the way uh, of uh, you know, the mental model that you use in order to code these functions, it's a little bit different to normal applications. That, if you are working with lambdas or any other you know, function platform, it's pretty much the same, but you need to kind of like be aware as a developer. Uh, the functions that we have used here for the levels are all synchronous, so they all have this kind of like latency problem. You need to wait for the functions to return in order to continue playing the game in this case. But because uh, for that we are only using Knative serving, right, like the serving part of the project, we can also start using the eventing part of the project, which will give us like a more reactive approach, right? So in this case, what we have done for the eventing side of things is we are using the Knative eventing broker and triggers to basically route cloud events inside the architecture. So every time that we score like one of these uh, levels, we are emitting a cloud event to a Knative broker, which is a cloud event router, and that event is being routed to the front end, which is then forwarded to the user interface, you know, that's client side. It's in my browser running here. So we have cloud events running all over the, like moving around all over the place. And we have this very, very generic infrastructure that we can wire dynamically for our applications. We can connect more pieces if we want to. We can route those events to multiple functions to keep pro doing processing and stuff. In my opinion, this provides you, this gives you a very nice developer experience because when you're building functions, in order to use all this messaging and cloud events and all that stuff, as a developer, I only need to use HTTP. I don't need to just you know, connect to a message broker or connect to Kafka or have an extra dependency in my application to generate cloud events. And in this case, we are using RSocket as like a bi-directional channel from the, you know, from the cluster to the browser in this case. So pretty simple and complicated stuff at the same time. We are planning to put this, you know, this, this example 
publicly available so people can play around with it and also you know, use it. Make your own trivia, right? Exactly. So you can make your own trivia. You can also show it like around yeah. to we people. We can do the Robocop in Detroit trivia. <laughs> we can do that. We can do that. We can do a hackathon as well, right? Yeah. Uh, before I start and share this playing, I wanted to just run a set of commands. I think that that's pretty much it. I want to check that the leaderboard is there. You get the QR code? Yes, I will just share it in a bit. So as soon as this is uh, you know, working, which is now right now, I will just share the QR code with you folks. So if you have your phone, open your phone. You can scan this yeah, uh, QR code. I want to have everyone a picture of everyone uh, playing. If the QR code doesn't work, there is a link there as well. Yesterday, I think that we hit the, like, the limit for yeah, the QR code. Yeah, we use a free service QR code. <laughs> My bad. Now, uh, using an NPM CLI <laughs> with a thousand dependencies. I can see people playing. So I will take off the, the QR thing, right? Is that all right? Everybody got it? Everybody's up? Who can I guess where, where those names are coming from? <laughs> Generating names. Five minutes, all right. And I will switch here and look at that. So we have like cloud That's events. Everybody Floating around like a lot of confetti there. Your people is basically so playing. And that's real time cloud events going to my browser from the cluster based on the things that you're playing there. Which is pretty nuts. Look at that. Oh. Like the notifications are going like And I guess crazy. people online are playing? If you're virtual, go if ahead you're and online, play. Look at that. <laughs> that worked out. I've never seen that library. Yeah, crash. I was a sorry? Show the pods on the cluster. I can show the pods on the cluster. That's very good, Evan. Thank you very much. And that's we're not using right. Lambda. We're not using Cloud Run. So it's Kubernetes, plain and simple. Yeah. Look at that. So you have all the pods there. Like CPU for the front end is going hard because we have a single replica there. We are going to change that pretty soon. And then I can yeah, go for back the web to the We're using WebSocket. So one thing that I think I mentioned when the milestone was yeah. some people um, <laughs> use Cloud that's Functions crazy. for others. But we can use WebSockets, HTTP2, gRPC. Look at that. We have like 115 people playing there. Yeah, I told you to share. Yes. So um, yeah, so if you finish, you can tweet your score. Um, and it has a link, right? So people can find it on, on Twitter and also play if they're on Twitter. That's pretty cool. Who's winning? Nice Rosalinda. Rosalinda, Rosalinda too. too. <laughs> and second place, Happy Carver 4. And third, Zillow's Mater 2. This is good. Does it say right. score, 68? Who has, a, who has a perfect score? No one? I think that, yeah, nice Rosalinda. No, Rosalinda is perfect. Okay, so I she means for, might, might be from Valencia, from Spain. <laughs> from Spain. Cool, cool stuff. All right, I think that that's... Do we have an extra slide? Yeah, I think the, the, end, the end slide, right? We do have an extra slide, that's true. Yeah, so it's a call out for the community to join us. Like I said, you can help in any capacity. If you're good writing docs, you're good advocating, you're good organizing and working with the community. We need help in that. And also security, network, all the aspects of, of, the, of the project. So we, we work on everyone that wants to either learn or, or contribute. Yeah. And I want to say like functions is definitely an easy entry point for people that it's already coding different kind of applications. It's a polyglot place. So if you want to come, just reach out. There are a bunch of Knative function maintainers here as well. So you know, just get in touch. You and, know. and templates, they can help with templates. Templates, we'll yeah, templates yeah, for Examples standardizing in your, in your company. If you have, like, we build functions like this, you can create your own template, and then your developers just take that template, and that's your standard in your company to write the functions. And you've got new relics built in if you want, or Datadog, or yep. whatever you want. Whatever is the monitoring agent or uh, thing that you have to have in that library that you, want, you don't want to explain to people how to get it, the template actually gets, gets it for you. Uh, questions? One, one question. One online. How do I get a sticker? There you have a sticker now. Yeah, at the end, at the end you can come, come here. Yes. Any other questions? Other questions. Do virtual? Oh, okay. Uh, no, from virtual we don't have anything. Please. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks a lot. It was great. I want to complain about the game because it was uh, biased for the people that are from Spain, from Valencia. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's great, great stuff. You know what? Um, 
I'm coming from a sort of a different world, the telco world, I work from <laughs> Vodafone, and uh, we are running now a new, a new, a lot of new activities on cloud. And I got into Knative from colleagues, you know, supporting us, other companies, and it's really, really very interesting. I want to do, we want to do things with Knative, mm -hmm. but you know, in our world, uh, everything stops when you reach uh, operations. So I was wondering observability areas. Yeah. Like when we launch that and we start spinning up functions and services, mm -hmm. how does the operations people don't go nuts? I mean, they can observe, they can monitor, and so on. That's just my question. A bit of information on that. Thanks. Can we repeat the question? Yes. So the question is about like observability and what are we doing around observability inside the project? Uh, what? Efficiently. How oh, we yeah. can do it efficiently? Okay. So, um, so the question is, you as a platform team is in charge of the cluster and giving uh, the developers access to, to the functions, how the best to run and monitor that cluster, I guess, right? So one level is the Kubernetes level that we're just launching pods, launching deployments. So those you use to your, your standard monitoring stack. And then we have, Evan can talk a little bit more uh, after we finish in details about the open census and the open telemetry of the controllers of Knative. I think that's also you want to watch. It's because it's, that's, that's you're owning those controllers. So we have a couple of controllers like Autoscaler, the main controller, the Autoscalers. They have uh, metrics endpoints that you can grab information from them. And so what? The Q-Proxy sidecar. And, yeah. and the Q-Proxy sidecar. So those are like K-native um, components that you want to tap into observability to see how are yeah. the health and how do you scale them. So there's, there's aspects of, of like com making the HPA of those components so they can have redundancy and scaling. So those, those type, of type of things are in the website. Mm -hmm. Some of that information is in the website, uh, but you can reach out to us. And there's also some Grafana, community-driven Grafana dashboards and the stack that you can tap, tap into it and get started on, on that. But a lot of people use other monitoring services, right? Yeah, and um, I think to your point, is like if you are already monitoring Kubernetes, you just keep doing yeah, that. Yeah, Kubernetes because you part, will see that, yeah. But I think uh, people ask, yeah. like, well, what about the other the, the the native yeah. components? Mm -hmm. uh, those are built like cloud native way and have uh, instrumentation into it. Uh, but definitely, we need people like you folks of like, what are the best patterns for that to have more documentation and examples on how to integrate maybe with third parties? That's a good question. Yep. I think we're, we're out of time. We we're run out of time, time yeah. but feel free to come. Yeah, uh, come, we will just come be, here we'll and stay ask around. questions, yeah. And stickers, like I can see Maria there. Thank you, folks. Have stickers? I'll take a picture.